Alrighty, welcome back to SP Podcast and I am SP Podcast. You should have expected that. Uh, I have made a couple of videos on uh, manga or anime culture and I don't want to be in that basket just because I want to expand my my palette. Let's just say that. So I'm not going to talk about any manga or any uh, anime series that I've been watching or I have dropped. Let's talk about something completely different. Let's talk about the comic books and the American comic books at that. As a guy who completely and exclusively reads manga or black and white comic books, the concept of colored pages or colored images was not really that amazing to my head. I regret saying that to myself, but it really is the truth. To me, comics were mostly limited to Batman, Spider-Man, Superman, Avengers, and everything superhero related. As I grew older, I did get expanded into a little bit different sides like Watchmen, which did help because they made a really good movie about it. But there are some series still lurking underground, even though they have had a lot of success. Now, I don't know how much truth I'm going to be speaking about it or how many people know about the series. But Why the Lost Man is an amazing, amazing comic book. It's an old comic book. It's really old. And I actually picked up because one of my favorite battle rappers called Caustic, he tweeted out a photograph with the first volume. He had a couple of uh, manga series in his hand and I'm like, the fuck is one comic book doing in there? So I got excited, I went online, I bought a volume and I read it. And then I went online and I bought the second volume and I read it. Today, I will finish it today. And let me tell you, it's one of the best, best series that I've ever read. Now, I have a confession to make that this is not an honest review. This is just a reaction to what I have read. And to that, I would just say I have only read two books. The first two, I do not have in my possession the other two at this moment just because they are too costly and I need to wait on my paycheck so that I can buy them. So... This is part one of maybe a two-parter or a three-parter, but this is an amazing book or an amazing series that needed an attention, that I wanted to give it attention. So the volume one of Why the Last Man, it opens up with an escape artist called Yorick. Well, it actually doesn't literally open with it, but for the sake of this podcast, let's just say it does. He's on this phone with his girlfriend Beth and she's in Australia and uh, for some reason after half an hour all the human beings with the Y chromosomes that is the men the one with the penis they die unfortunately or fortunately Yorick doesn't or neither does his monkey a male monkey called Ampersand and this is where the Uh, the book actually begins the first book deals with him going to his mom who is a a politician in the Washington and uh, he lives in New York so he has to deal with all the violence or all the gratuity that has become this world it is mostly set in New York or at this moment and they have to travel other places so that they can they can find another play, other people. They can find another human beings, and they may even discover other man. But at this moment, they he she. <coughs> I'm sorry for that. At this moment, Yorick only has company of one person, and that is called Agent Three Five Five, a young black woman with amazing set of skills, and that is how the story moves forward. They are told about a doctor, Dr. Man, and that's actually really hilarious now that I think about it, but Dr. Amanda Man, who is um, cloning something, I don't care about it too much. So she has successfully cloned XYZ in the future, in the past, 
and I'm not gonna explain it too much because something happens and then something else happens and then she gives up on his cloning on her clone shit it is a she they go there they discover it and on their tail is something called the sons of Arizona no 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 the Amazons the daughter of Amazons I'm sorry the sons of Arizona do come later so the daughter of Amazons have a special ability because of all the ladies are present in the world one of the breasts it have to be mutilated and that really is fucked up but it is what it is it's the rule of the Amazons no wait yeah it is the rule of the Amazons and that you have to be a part of it and you have to mutilate one breast the story moves forward and then they go to uh, they they reach one village while they are going to San Francisco I don't know if they're uh, if uh, I mentioned this or not, but they are going to San Francisco and uh, they have uh, they move into one village and the Amazons corner them. Now the interesting part is that the whole village with the ladies is made up of convicts, like ex-convicts. They were all let loose because all the men died and uh, it's all full of criminals with murderers, rapists. I don't even know if I should be saying that, but this happens they kill the leader of the Amazons and lo and behold there is somebody who hero who the hero yeah the protagonist knows uh, in the Amazons XYZ again happens and they put all the ladies of the Amazons in the jail that the convicts escape from the movie oh no not the movie the book goes on to book two I mean the story goes to book two from here on and the story continues with the three characters the black lady the doctor and a dumbass they get into a couple of uh, excitement and uh, a couple of uh, events where they have to where they almost get their heads blown off but they are still surviving let's just say that and in the meantime there is something that a politician is planning with the Israeli women army let's just say that because Israel has a history I do believe it has a history of strong women or women in army and uh, it has been used particularly well in this story it is also discovered that there are men at least two in the space and uh, they are trying to come home so the story moves in a little bit forward I'm not explaining too much I'm sorry about it I'm just giving you a brief uh, explanation because I don't want to spoil too much of it because the book two is really somewhere where the things try to make sense the book one is just a, just a rough draft of what the story can become the book two really gives direction anyway continue uh, Yorick has a good attitude change and let me tell you it's one of the most surreal realistic heartfelt and horrifying set of dialogue images and imagery that follows in this book I really love that segment and if anybody has written has, has read the last man before you know who I'm talking about so uh, the airpod no not the airpod god damn it the two men in the space they come to the land and unfortunately they die but they have a, another woman who is pregnant uh, I'm not gonna reveal the gender it could be a boy or a girl it could be a girl or a boy but I'm not gonna explain it right now anyway she survives and then she's taken care of and the adventure continues XYZ happens and in the end there is an the relative uh, the guy the person who was connected to Yorick our hero comes to uh, the pregnant woman's safety base camp I'm again just going around about just because I don't want to reveal a lot base camp where she's held and uh, she asks for Yorick yeah I cannot come confuse you with he asks you for Yorick because not all men are surviving I don't know if that joke works or not the book and there and that is the end of volume two 
the books are written by Brian K. Vaughn. I think it's illustrated by Pia Guerrera. I don't know how Jose Martinez Jr. is involved, but this, the book too does include a fourth person called Goran Parlov, which I believe is the brother of DC Parlov from Brooklyn Nine-Nine. On the off chance you have not watched Brooklyn Nine-Nine, please do that. And that is end of my TED Talk. Now let's get into why this book is such an amazing piece of story writing, even though I have read like 40% of it. First of all, the premise. The premise is outstanding. It's nothing that I've read before. And I've read some creepy ass manga. I read Gyo and did not puke. And that's really amazing for my standards. And why does this manga, why does this book work is because it's easy to get invested. You know when somebody uh, reads or somebody says that oh I read manga and it's a Japanese art form or Japanese media. There's a resistance, a wall. And I have been involved in western culture like uh, North America or even Europe that uh, I don't feel that wall anymore. It's the same thing with manga and anime but I don't feel that wall in between that uh, Western culture. I've watched movies since I was 10 or 12 and remind, let me remind you, I'm an Indian guy, I'm a brown dude. Nobody in my family does that except my younger brother who got interested after I started watching. So he and me, we used to listen to music, we used to watch a lot of music videos, a lot of movies and then we started with series. Then we went into anime and uh, that's how the walls are broken down in the different cultures. I don't know how uh, many people can agree with that but I do believe that this is some of the ways. I have been reading manga for a little over than a year now but I have never touched a comic book. I This is my first comic book and I'm so happy and there was no resistance. It was difficult because I was flipping the pages uh, from left to right, which is a wrong way. <laughs> but it was a good experience. The colors, let me tell you, it's too bright for me. Uh, I've, after a year and a half of exclusively reading words on a page and words with blank, black and white pictures on a page, it gets really hard to immerse yourself in a colorful world and even though this story is really good with violence, gore, a lot of sex and a lot of expl uh, exposed boobies, it still gets a little bit difficult. But it uh, was really immersive. Once you get into a good book, you cannot stop and that's the same thing that happened with me. I started following this young uh, geeky guy who's an escape artist which I have never thought could be a good uh, attribute to for a for a protagonist because I'm an author and I will link my book uh, in the description please read it but I have never thought about having a protagonist as a as an escape artist and this is manipulated in a good way because he gets captured and uh, he gets put into uh, handcuffs a lot of times and he has to break through or improvise a lot of times again so it makes a lot of sense why people would uh, get attached to him he's incapable he's traveling with two ladies but he has no uh, attraction or let's just say he's a little bit afraid uh, there are different secrets revealed by each of them and uh, there's again the same uh, self-reflection scene in book two is really amazing that explains a lot of dark secrets and a lot of dark past that Yorick has dealt with so he becomes a really relatable guy he's not like one of those harem anime uh, manga book or uh, light novel protagonists let me tell you that because they have a clean slate they have a clean slate just so you can project yourself but this one no he has his own personality he has his own finesse he has his own skills right in harem anime 
you are surrounded by, or let's just say you, yeah, sure. You're surrounded by like five women with big titties and they want to throw your, throw themselves to you and you are just too dense to notice. Yorick is an escape artist with a dedicated girl. And let me tell you, when you're just one guy with one penis and the other penis in the whole world is a monkey's, a lot of ladies are attracted to you. And, and a lot of ladies do try to have their game on with Yorick, but he still gets uh, a little bit uncomfortable. He will give in because he's a man, but for a 90% of this time, he would stick to Beth, his girlfriend, who is supposedly uh, still alive and is still in Australia. Isn't that right, matey? Oh, wait, that's a European. So I'm sorry about that, but you know what I'm saying. The protagonist, yes. The villains, no. The villains are one of the worst parts of this book. I don't hate it, but it's something that you have to deal with. Let me explain why. The villains are one note. They do not have depth. You need to have a couple of people around you so that you can develop them. The Daughters of Arizona, no, the Daughters of Amazon with mutilated one breast, sure. They are forced to be reckoned with because they have numbers. They have a cult. They are, they are mind-washing people who have driven young women into stupidity. And I get behind it because that's what seclusion will do to your mind. That's what people will think when there's one good speaker in front of you convincing you that every man is evil. But it doesn't go anywhere after book one. Let's get to book two. The Sons of Arizona. A really good, expert, small group of women with training in militia with weapon training and they have uh, guts to go against the world they're like five they're like eight and uh, they get killed now they get killed because the heroes need to survive but they get killed nonetheless it is hinted that there are more but who knows when they're going to be used up again my knowledge is limited to the series at this moment I can only judge it right now as the 40% of the story. I don't know how this book is going to go. And I believe me that I will read it. I will purchase it because I'm trying to do a legal thing here. I'm trying to buy them. I'm not trying to read it online just because, hey, I'm excited. I had to wait. It's $26 a book. It's costly. But you need to understand why I'm... Uh, why I'm trying to make it I'm just trying to convince you just to push you a little bit further so that you can read this uh, book you can experience this that's why I'm not giving away too much that's why you don't know a lot of about it because it is a spoiler free it is really easy to listen and then get convinced because it's it, the story speaks for itself it's not a hard story to get into, but it's also not black and white. It deals with racism. It deals with sexism. It deals with matriarchy and patriarchy. It deals with hot buzzwords that uh, people would like to throw around for free. And I'm not going to say it because I don't want to be in hot waters, even though I don't have any subscribers or barely any listeners. But it does make sense why it, it is so popular. This book or this book series has won three Eisen Awards. The recent Eisen Award given that I know about is Junji Ito for his Frankenstein remake. I haven't read that yet because God knows that is costly. It's like 30 to 40 bucks for a book. Who gives shit about that? Maybe I steal some. But this is a big deal. Number one New York's bestseller. That title on a book looks good. Winner of three Eisen Awards look really, really great. So, going back into why this book is amazing, 
we have talked about the characters we've talked about the depth let's talk about the art the art is not perfect nothing is and let me tell you there is no such thing as a good art right talk to those art students uh, who are obsessed with the white painting because it says something and discuss that with them what a perfect art is and who is better but in animation there is no one good art or one great art hence this example hence all the manga hence all the difference that you get through the spectrum if anybody has even read attack on titan the first volume and go read the 28th there's a difference in art because the author improved and then go read no guns light the art is rough it's hard to follow the action but it follows but it is exciting because it suits the environment and then go read phantoms of the tales of the night the art is suave slick beautiful black and white it's amazing to look at it's very soul pleasing and then read my pathetic vampire's life it's easy comical light breezy a lot of grays and very comical art why do you think everything works and why do you think i named attack on titan no guns life phantoms of the tales of the night and my pathetic vampire life in the same breath because i read all of them i love all of them and that is amazing because they have all different art i cannot compare it i just know that i love both of them all of them same thing with the the last man coming back at it the art doesn't take a lot of hits when it's transitioning from book one to book two because they have their character models and i agree with that but it's not bad art it's impressive when it's not in action the action is one of the lousiest parts of this book but it's not the action that you're looking for it's exp 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 exposition i th i thought i could say it i thought so the exposition the status of the world the interaction of human beings that is what you're looking for you want some hard-hitting art well, go read my hero academia it has a lot of action it has a lot of boom blam and blam whatever you want to say it but for this for what it's worth the art is awesome the color chosen for past sequences and for exclusion a lot of blacks and a lot of sepias that's what i know so this is one of the most impressive pieces of literature that i've ever read anyway that's it for my review i rate it 5 out of 10 i'm just kidding i'm gonna rate it 2 out of 10 you don't have to believe me but please believe that i'm gonna be leaving the links for kanda please shop it at least shop one and let your mind think where this book is going why the last man is an amazing story with a lousy pace i'm kidding it's a good story with a good pace a pumping action and a passable art i'm kidding again please read the last man with the y chromosome Who's also knows nothing? Well, um, I didn't say nothing. Alrighty. Bye.